Another of the options that MapMate gives you for creating maps is to use an image as the background for your map. For instance, this could be a scanned image of an existing map, perhaps of a nature reserve boundary showing some compartments, or it could be an aerial photo, anything that could act as a backdrop to a map and which has been drawn to a consistent scale can in theory be used as one of these images in MapMate. One thing to bear in mind however is that you do need to make sure you have copyright permission to use whichever image you're intending to work with. The terminology that MapMate uses to refer to these maps is to call them picture maps. So if you want to find out from MapMate's help files how to go through this procedure you can do so by going to the main help menu, looking at help topics and under using maps and then the general help you'll see there's an item called using picture maps. So as long as you remember that that's the term MapMate uses you can always go to the help files for advice on using these picture maps. For the example we're going to look at here I'm using a map taken from the OpenStreetMap website which is an open source site um, that does actually give you uh, an option to export an image from the map here. Whichever image you decide to use for your picture map, you need to be able to specify the coordinates of the map and you'll need to be able to specify a grid reference for the southwest or bottom left corner of the map and the northeast or top right corner of the map. Ideally that should be a grid reference to the actual corner point of the map but if you can get a good reference somewhere near the corners that can also work. The other useful thing to record is the size of the map image that you're using in pixels. Depending on how your computer is set up you may be able to get the pixel size from the My Computer or File Manager part of your computer or you may need to open it into some image processing software and get the pixel size there. For instance, on my computer, once I've found the map in the file manager, I can just hover over it and it actually gives me the dimensions in pixels direct from there. I find it useful just to make a note of these items uh, that you're going to need later on, so the grid references for the two corners and the height and width in number of pixels, and just keep that separately in a word processing document or similar. So having prepared yourself with the image that you're going to use for your picture map and having worked out the coordinates and size, we can go back into MapMate and our starting point to create a picture map is to go to File Menu, New Map, New Blank Map and we don't change anything on these first few choices, we just go Next, Next and Next. We do need to give the map a name. The example I'm using is for the Windsor Forest area so I'll just call it Windsor Picture Map for now. Make sure that the Add a Border option is not ticked. And we just OK that. And we have a blank map into which we can now insert our picture file. I find that the easiest option for the actual image that we're going to use to create this map is to save it into the My MapMate folder under Data and then Maps. That's where the information to do with MapMate standard maps is kept and there's no reason why you can't add your picture maps here as well. It keeps them all in one place. So we can now go on to add our picture image to this map. And to do that we go to Edit, Insert, Map Picture File. Now you should find that the when you go to insert a picture file it, it looks for it first of all in the maps part of the My MapMate folder, so under My MapMate Data Maps. So that's one reason why it's a good idea to save your picture file into that folder to start with. You can navigate to other folders on your computer if it's stored somewhere else, but um, I find it easiest to put it in that folder. And there is our Windsor picture map, and I can OK that. So the map has appeared, but at this stage we haven't calibrated it, so that although MapMate is telling me a different grid reference as I move around the map, the grid references are not the ones that are actually applicable to this area near Windsor. So the next job is to add some calibration points. To do that we go to the feature list, right click on the picture file and choose the calibrate option. And the first thing to do is to enter the two grid references that you've calculated for the two corners of your map. So if we go back to our information sheet for the southwest corner, I'm going to copy the grid reference that I had there. And that goes
goes in under P1 for point 0.1 and then going to just click into the P2 box and get my good reference for the northeast corner and paste that into there. The next step is to actually say where these points are on the map and my grid references do refer to the actual corners of the map so I'll go back to P1 just click in the grid reference part of P1 for point 0.1 and I now need to actually say on the map where point 0.1 is I find that it's easiest to um, zoom in to do this so I'll just draw a box and choose zoom in and I can then position the cursor as close to the corner as I can and what you have to do is to find the point that your grid reference refers to and, and then do a right click to tell MapMate that that is the point. If I right click at various places on this map you can see that the coordinate numbers change depending on where I click and because this is right down in the corner what we actually want to do is to click down here and ideally get it to 0, 0 as a coordinate but unfortunately you can't actually type that in you do have to do it by clicking on the map OK, so that's got point 0.1 at the 0, 0 coordinate. We'll bring the map back out by left-clicking and restore. I now click onto point 0.2, and this time I want to zoom in to the northeast corner. And again, it's a matter of positioning the cursor right in the corner and right-clicking, and that provides the coordinates for that corner. So we'll left-click and restore again. So we've provided the coordinates for the two points and the grid references for the two points. We can now click on the Calibrate button. At this point, MapMate asks you to confirm how many metres per pixel there are in this map. Now, in theory, that's something you can calculate yourself if you know the size of your map in pixels and you also know the distance that is actually shown on the map. But in practice, I find that it doesn't always actually improve the situation even if you do calculate those figures accurately and normally I just accept what MapMate offers here. Some people do find that the maps do not calibrate correctly first time and we'll look at what you can do about that later on in this video but for the moment we're just going to accept the figure that MapMate has come up with and click on OK. It doesn't look as if anything has changed but in fact that map now has now been calibrated and as I move the cursor around the map I can see that the grid references are falling in the area that I would expect them to and indeed the um, counties do seem to be the right ones for this part of the world. So it looks as if everything has gone well with that map. So that is now saved as a picture map which you can use as a base map for creating a species atlas and we'll just do that to see how that works. So I'm going to go to File, New Map, Atlas Wizard and just quickly set up an atlas for moths in Berkshire. Now when you come to choose the base map, your picture map won't be listed. If you remember, this, the list that MapMate initially shows you is only of the maps that have the word base map in their title. So I suppose we could have called our map Windsor Base Map Picture or something like that. But no matter, if the map isn't in your list you can get it by going to the preview button you'll then need to change the view to maps in this data set and you should find Windsor picture map or whatever you've called your map in that list and OK it and then you have the usual choices about how you're going to set up your atlas map because this is a picture map of quite a small area rather than using a one kilometer or two kilometer square I'm going to go for the absolute option which will actually put a cross at the precise grid reference for each of the records in this area and I'm going to adjust the title of the map so that I know what it's referring to so just using the great oak beauty moth as an example this is a species which has a strong population in the Windsor area and we can see that the um, crosses are showing at the precise points at which it's been recorded around Windsor Forest and Great Park. So we've seen how to create a picture map in MapMate and then use it for an atlas and the sequences to prepare your scanned image or whatever you're going to use as the picture. Make sure you've calculated the um, grid references for the two corners of the map. Create a blank map in MapMate, bring the picture into that blank map calibrate it by specifying where those grid references refer to and you can then use that map as a backdrop for one of your species atlas maps. For the last section of this video we're just going to look at how you can actually edit the underlying calibration data for this map. 
Now you may find that you don't need to do this. The map that we've just created for this demonstration does seem to have ended up in, in the right place and the records are showing where I would expect them to show. But some people have found that the calibration process doesn't always end up in the right place. If you're in that situation, then you have the option of either trying to recreate your map and um, trying to get the coordinates to work out better the second time round, or there's a slightly more complicated, but in some ways more controllable way of doing it, which is to find the underlying calibration file that goes with the map and edit that directly. This requires a certain amount of knowledge of how map coordinates work, um, but once you've got that into your head, then it's um, reasonably straightforward to do, and we'll, we'll just give that a try for the last section of this video. First thing we need to do is to go into the Maps folder where our map image was saved, and what we're looking for is a calibration file. In some circumstances, MapMate does create the calibration files when you create a picture map, but it hasn't done that in this case, and um, certainly I haven't seen that happen in the maps that I've created recently. So the first thing you need to do is to find an existing calibration file. That's a file that has .cal on the end of it, and save that so that it has the same name as the picture map that you've just created. So I'm going to make a copy of the existing calibration file in that folder and paste it back into the folder and then rename it so that it has the same name as my picture map. To open this file you should be able to right click on it and you may have an option to open or open with and what you need to do is to open it with a program such as Notepad and this is the contents of that calibration file. Most of this we can leave exactly as it is, but we need to adjust the name and we then need to specify the coordinates and the pixels in the map that we are actually using. And this is where you need to have a little bit of understanding of how the coordinates match to your grid references. So to look at that, let's go back to the grid references that we um, calculated for our picture map. These are expressed in the standard grid reference way of having two initial letters followed by six figures. And in fact, what the letters do is refer to a particular 100 kilometer square on the UK national grid. What we need to do is to transform these grid references into actual coordinates based on meter measurements, and that gets a little bit fiddly. The first thing you need to know is what numbers the letters translate into. And one place you can find that out from is from the um, MAGIC website, for which there's a link on the BSBI MapMate website, which um, gives you a nice little map showing you the letters and the numbers that they translate into. So the area that we're in is SU, which translates to 4-1. What you now need to do is to be able to split out the Eastings and the Northings in the grid reference and turn them into separate coordinate numbers for the Eastings and the Northings. So looking at SU913688, the S is part of the Eastings and the 913 is part of the Eastings, whereas the U and the 688 are part of the Northings. So we need to separate them out and we need to translate from the letters to the numbers. We've already looked up that the S and the U translate into a 4 and a 1, but the 4 and the 1 actually mean 400,000 metres and 100,000 metres. So they go on the left-hand end of our coordinate. For the Eastings, we then take the 913 from the grid reference and put that in, but we need to add another couple of zeros so that the number correctly reads as 491,300. Likewise, for the Northings, the U becomes a 1, followed by the 688 from the grid reference, followed by another couple of zeros. So the coordinates for this grid reference end up being the numbers shown here. So that was for our southwest corner, and we do a similar operation for the northwest corner, splitting the grid reference up into its Eastings and Northings, translating the numbers to get the coordinate there as well. So having translated our grid references into coordinates, we now need to specify those coordinates in the format that MapMate needs them for its calibration file. And that is to give the X and Y, or Easting and Northing coordinates, for the bottom left-hand corner and the top right-hand corner. So we can just copy the number for X, O, 
go back to our calibration file and fill that in for the XO value and then likewise for the others. And then the final task is to add the pixels for the width and height of the map. So we go back to where we kept a note of those. And having made those changes to the name, the X and Y values and the pixel values, we can save the calibration file and close that down. And having created that calibration file, you should find that the map in MapMate, when you go to open your picture map, will be correctly calibrated and will display record dots correctly over the top of that. So that is quite a fiddly operation to specify that calibration, and you may find that you don't need to do that. You may find that your map gets calibrated correctly when you first import it into MapMate. So you only really need to worry about that if the calibration has gone wrong and you need to do something to correct it at a later stage.